Well, hello guys. Welcome back to another episode of Everyday EDC. Sorry if I just got quieted there. I was leaning over to the side. My name is Tyler, and today I have a blue class review for you, which if you are following my class structure and understand it as well as I do, which I don't. I feel like I'm making it up every time. I believe the blue class goes up to 150 bucks, plus or minus, something like that. Right. Okay. So this knife is coming in at a, under or at $150, and this knife is the Kaiser Cormorant. So I want to first thank Travis for sending this into the channel for review. Uh, I didn't even know this thing existed, but this is supposed to be a smock killer um, in that it is a button lock. It has all these fidgety things you can do with it, and yeah. So we're going to get into that. Very, very cool. Very excited to check it out, and so let's get going, right? So the Kaiser Cormorant. This is a G10, and somebody dyed these scales. These X's and these underlays over here were white. I believe this is two pieces of G10 and it's just hard to see the seam because they did it so well. I think there's a seam going here. It it looks potentially like two separate pieces but it's very difficult to tell. So who Kaiser putting this together that tells you a lot about the fit and finish. It is fantastic. Anyways these X's were white and go look up the Cormorant. It's such an ugly design with the white and the black. The black on black looks just fine. So Good choice in the guy you bought it from, Travis, for dyeing this black. Great. So as you can tell, this is an ambidextrous pocket clip, and it is deep carry. Just a generic stainless steel going on here. Nothing too big. We have some barrel spacers going on right there. And the cool thing about this is, is this does have recessed liners going through here. So they're doing so much. It's so cool. We have the button right here with a little bit of texturing on the button. And then we have the opening hole. Here's what's weird, right? You have an opening hole. You have jimping on here. You have a front flipper right there with a bunch more jimping. And then you got a friggin' flipper tab in the back, which doesn't look like one, but actually is. So this thing is supposed to have like 6,700,000 different opening methods, right? Just as a quick, whoop. we'll get into that actually. No, we'll do the opening methods now. So you can button lock it open. You can spidey flick it open. You can thumb flip it open. Oh. You can front flip it open, you can flip it open, you can spidey drop it open, yeah. I mean, it. if you want to talk about a fidgety knife, and if you want to talk about the feeling, it's not a thwap. It kind of has, if you guys remember, anybody who's familiar with the smock, the smock has that weird, like, mechanical, clicky feeling as it opens and shuts. It's almost like a spring. There's obviously no spring, but that's the way it feels. Uh, yeah, that's the feeling that you're getting when you're doing this. So it did mirror the smock in that too. It, it, it even feels the same in Mimics. We have the sheep's foot style blade, which is cool, and I believe this is S35VN, which is very cool as well. There is some chamfering going down. I'm not going to call this a swedge the way that it's shaped. It's just some deep chamfering wannabe swedge, if you will. We have a thumb ramp that's going on here and some over the top jimping like like your spike from Gremlins going all the way down the butt there. And that just about covers a lot of it. So there's a slight choke up point right here or you can grab it like this. You can do this. You have a lot of options and we're going to talk about those on whether or not that's a good or bad thing and kind of what I think they tried to do. But without further ado, let's get you guys some specs and then we will go into some size comparisons and I will give some overall thoughts on the knife. This one I have a lot to talk about guys. I, I, I'm trying to rush through the beginning but there's, I'm not trying to rush, I just don't want to make this a forever video. Unlike my forever knives that are always forever and ever in my heart. My heart will go on. So this is 3.05 ounces which is fairly light. That's, that's a pretty damn good mark right there. Where is the rest of my shit? All right, what happened to my tape measure and freaking, you son of a biscuit. Two hours later. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Technical difficulties. Two hours later. All right, so 
to the overall length of this bad boy. It's coming in at just about seven and a quarter inches. The blade length is coming in at, am I seeing that right? Wow. So the blade length is coming in at just about three and a quarter to three and a half. So the blade length to length ratio is absolutely fantastic here. I didn't realize that. And let's get you guys some specs on the blade. The overall thickness is coming in at about 120 thousandths. The behind the edge thickness is coming in at 18, 19 thousandths. Not bad, not bad. The scale thickness is coming in at 470 thousandths. And the overall height in your pocket is coming in at a whopping 1.2 inches. Not bad. The carry profile on this you are not going to be mad at at all. All right. So... Let's get you guys some size comparisons. First and foremost, we have your CJRB Mini Feldspar and your CJRB Tigress. Tigress, she's a Tigress. Uh, obviously, larger than your Mini Feldspar and smaller than your Tigress, both in height and length. Moving on here, we have your Rat Model 1 and your Rat Model 2. Obviously much smaller than your Rat Model 1, and actually just about the same length as your Rat Model 2. So if you're a fan of the size of the Rat Model 2, you're going to be a fan of the size of the Kaiser Cormorant. Next on the list, we have your Savivi Knives 8010 and your Savivi Elementum and S35VN. I feel like I need to tell you guys I don't actually think this is a Savivi knife. I mean, I feel like I shouldn't have to, but I should tell you guys that uh, that was a joke. So people that are going to be like, that's a cold steel, man. That's the original. I get it. Like I, I'm being stupid. Anyways, I, I just know somebody's going to say that along with your nails are fugly, and I'm just going to probably hide you from the channel. Yeah, yeah, moving on. All right, so this is just about the same length as... The Civivi Elementum, and much smaller than your Cold Steel AD-10. That bit the shit out of me at one point in time. That AD-10 is ferocious, man. He's got a bite to him. Here is your Man Bug or Dragonfly, whatever the hell. I don't even know what it is. Still haven't figured it out, but it's a small Spyderco. And your Spyderco Spidey Chef. The Spidey Chef is coming in at just a little bit longer, but not much. But obviously this is much longer than your Man Bug, Dragonfly, whatever the hell that is. I think it's a dragonfly, but I'm not sure. All right, so let's talk about this guy. First and foremost, it has a really cool, aggressive-looking, I'm going to call it a sheep's foot. Maybe it's like a reverse tanto slash spearhead. Like, I don't, it's kind of got a lot going on there, right? You have this opening hole right here, and it is an S35VN blade. This is a button lock with a front flipping action. You have a back flipping action. You have a reverse flicking action. You have a thumb flipping action. You have a button lock action. And you can even do the spidey drop action. So there's a lot to fidget with here. A, that's a good thing. I'm kind of going to go into my likes and dislikes, I guess, in this segment. Because I do also want to point out that this blade shape is phenomenal. It's like a half drop point, half... It's like the mixture between the drop point and the sheep's foot style, but it's got a very good, probably better than both the drop point and sheep's foot as far as piercing power. Yeah, really cool. This, that blade shape's really cool. But let's talk about the ugly. That right here is fugly. The way that they did this so that you can access it I mean, it works phenomenally, but holy smokes is that ugly. Now, another good thing that I like is how dense the handle feels. This handle feels super freaking dense. It's great. But it's not very comfortable. It reminds me of the smock, but the smock was more comfortable than this once you actually took that choil a little bit deeper. That choil sucked in the beginning, but the, this, the smock, in my opinion, has this beat on ergonomics and feel. But this feels good. No, this feels average. It doesn't feel great. It feels good. But I don't know where to put my thumb. This doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. Um, this feels weird, but choking up doesn't feel right. Like, it, I don't think this is a knife that you're going to want to use for a long period of time. 
But they tried to do all this G10 overlay stuff here with the white and the stuff, which you can't tell because it was re-dyed. And then they tried to do all these opening mechanisms, which the rear flipper works, but it's kind of goofy and it's not the most comfortable. The front flipper works just fine. The reverse flick works just fine. The thumb flip works just fine. That's all fine. And you've got a shit ton of opening methods. Might as well slap some freaking thumb studs on there just to cap it off, right? And a thumb disc at the bottom because you were cramming all this shit into one thing and you made the blade look fugly and you kind of jacked up the ergonomics. <sighs> So I don't want to sound like I'm ripping this knife apart because what I do appreciate here is the ability and what they've done overall and just crammed so much and so little. This is almost like a show-off knife that they're doing. Hey, look what we can do. We can do this, 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 this. Give you a really cool blade shape, this, 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 this. But it's, it's because they tried to do so much with the opening methods and just keep it you know, you're keeping the stick shape, but then like it, like even this kind of looks goofy, right? And if you have this, I don't know, if this was straight, so if you, what, all right, I've kind of gone over my likes, my dislikes, I'm not going to recap it because my thought process was all over the freaking map, but what I'm going to tell you, and I'm glad that I wrote this, and I'm glad that I went in my brain because I'm not going off of my notes, but I look back just to like double check my notes, and my notes state get rid of this freaking opening hole. If you were to get rid of this opening hole here, flatten this out, get rid of this mile long jimping strip, but just create a nice gentle thumb ramp that kind of goes half of what this is up and then follows the spine, or you don't even need a freaking thumb ramp, right? This thing would be awesome. Look at the profile without the hole, right? This actually creates for a weird ergonomic, like it feels like it fits and then you get in there and you're like, I kind of don't like it. But if this was just flat, I mean, everything would be neutral. I mean, it would feel good. You wouldn't have to cram here. You could actually go here. It would feel fine. Once, desperately, get rid of that opening hole, and I think this whole knife gets fixed and everything works out great. Um, unfortunately, that's not really something that you could do on your own. That's something that they would have to do within the design. But in my opinion, that's what the design needs, and then this would be phenomenal. Um, I didn't mention, or maybe I did, ambidextrous pocket clip and recessed. That's cool, but they did use button head screws. So you're kind of like, eh, recess it and then use button head screws. Why? Anyways. So, this is the Kaiser Cormorant. Now, I haven't really torn apart a knife like this in a long time, and I kind of feel bad. I don't want to give the impression that I don't like this. By the way, this is $120. I don't want to give the impression that I don't like this because I actually do. I actually appreciate everything that's going on. And to be honest, this would be such a cool knife if you got rid of that. Um, they're doing so much and it definitely competes with the Spyderco Smock at $40 to $50 cheaper than the Smock, but you're getting generically the same shit except for you're getting G10 instead of that carbon fiber weave shit. Um, yeah. So anyways, this is Kaiser Cormorant. 120 bucks. Is it worth it? For sure. It's got a lot going on. If you're a fidgety person, you like the fidget knives, you like all that shit, uh, which we, most of us do, but if you're one that does it more so than most, this is the knife for you. It's fantastic. And the blade shape is so functional. The blade is fantastic. Uh, I mean, the rest of the ergonomics are just okay, but for 120 bucks, guys, I don't think you're going to be mad at it. I think you're going to be super happy, even if it's just a fidgety knife that makes a cut every now and then. Kaiser Cormorant, Tyler, Everyday EDC, you guys stay sharp, stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, guys. Hey guys, listed as my Patreon, my Instagram, and a special shout out to all the patrons. John, Sammy, Eggs and Ham, Jason M, Dogtooth, Kaiba, Mickey, Wolf, and Captain Steve. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Tyler, this is Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great freaking day.